Boyle's Law is the first of the gas laws that we'll look at in this course. Robert Boyle was a 17th century Irish scientist who described the way gas volume and pressure is related. Whenever there's a handy mnemonic for remembering which gas law is which, I'll try to remember to mention them. So, in order to remember which one is Boyle's Law, a common mnemonic is Boyle's Balloons. Although, I prefer to think of Bubbles and Boyle's Beer. Boyle's Law states that the volume is inversely proportional to the pressure, assuming a constant temperature. It's written P is proportional to 1 over V. The proportional part just means that one value changes in lockstep with the other. They're not necessarily equal. In fact, there is usually another number called a constant in these situations that modifies the final value, but they do always change in a fixed ratio to one another. A constant of 2, for example, means that one value might have twice the magnitude of the other, but when they change, the ratio between the two is still fixed. However, in Boyle's law, P is proportional to 1 over the volume, an inverse relationship. So, as one value increases, the other will decrease, or vice versa, rather than both increasing or both decreasing. If we imagine that the orange cylinder is pressure, and that the blue one is volume, we can see how the inverse proportionality affects their values. Boyle's law can also be written as P1V1 equals P2V2. Either way that you look at it, it means that as pressure increases on a gas, the volume decreases, and as the pressure decreases, the volume increases. So why is Boyle's Law significant? In the flight environment, the ambient air pressure changes all the time. As elevation increases and air pressure falls, we can expect the cuff on an endotracheal tube to expand. The balloon on the Foley catheter, the airspace in a pneumothorax, a pneumocephalus, or even a pneumomediastinum. All of these things change volume as the pressure changes. You can imagine the consequences. Gastric air could cause discomfort. An expanding ET tube could cause necrosis in the tracheal lining, or the balloon itself could rupture. An expanding pneumothorax could cause rising intrathoracic pressure and even hemodynamic collapse. In order to mitigate the effect, we can choose to fly at a lower altitude for affected patients, or in some cases, we might be able to modify cabin pressure. Because fluids are virtually incompressible in comparison with gases, it is sometimes appropriate to fill balloons with water or saline instead of air.